I, Richard Bilhouse Nixon, do solemnly swear. By the time Richard Nixon reached the White House in 1969, the Cold War had been underway for more than two decades. The superpowers had reached a crossroads. They could continue the saber-rattling and confrontations that threatened to plunge the world into nuclear war. Or they could agree to disagree and seek areas of mutual interest. In 1969, they chose the latter. And a decade of relative calm in the Cold War began. In Europe, West German Chancellor Willy Brandt called it Aspolitik. In the United States, Nixon and his national security advisor Henry Kissinger called it detente. It did not end the Cold War, but it created a framework for cooperation among the rivals. In 1972, President Nixon embarked on a diplomatic trip that came to symbolize detente. When he touched down at Capitol Airport near Peking, Nixon became the first American president to be welcomed in the Communist People's Republic of China. It was a historic opening in the Cold War. During a week of diplomacy and cultural exchange, two former enemies made great progress toward normalizing relations. Not to be outdone, Soviet Union reached out to the West as well. German Leonid Brezhnev saw detente as an opportunity to gain access to valuable foreign aid and open its borders to international trade. In May 1972, the Kremlin in Moscow played host to the American president. Together, Nixon and Brezhnev signed the first ever agreements to limit nuclear weapons. The SALT I and ABM treaties were largely symbolic, but they represented a mutual effort to work towards cooperation and coexistence. <laughs> President Nixon appealed to the Soviet people and their leaders. Dobrovetsky, as we look at the prospects for peace, we see that we have made significant progress at reducing the possible sources of direct conflict between us. But history tells us that great nations have often been dragged into war without intending it by conflicts between smaller nations. As great powers, we can and should use our influence to prevent this from happening. Our goal should be to discourage aggression in other parts of the world and particularly among those smaller nations that look to us for leadership and example. With great power goes great responsibility. 